Well, welcome to another session of Taste at Home with Oscar Quevedo. On this side, on the screen side, is Oscar. Um, very important also on, on the, as a moderator of the, um, of the comment section is uh, Frédéric Blais. We are not sitting together, so it's going to be fun to see if we can communicate properly this um, during the next hour. A big thank you once again to Tony Carter and his team at the Vintage Wine and Port for giving us the opportunity to, to do another session like this. I was checking my notes and it's interesting to see that the first session, the first Taste at Home with Oscar took place one year and one week ago in 2020. Um, few things that you may need to get before we go full steam into the tasting. Get my suggestion six port, uh, five or six port glasses. Six is better than five. One or two liquid measures. Get your five bottles next to you, of course. Get some water, drink it. It's not there only to be next to you. And um, I think this is, this is the most, these are the most important things. Anytime you have questions, please drop them on the, la on the, on the chat section. Um, I will then try to answer. Maybe Fred is also uh, going to help me answering those questions. So um, feel free anytime to, to drop those questions. One thing that we will need for today is inspiration. You know, this, this job in our family is performed by my sister, Claudia. She's the, the important person behind all the magic that Port takes in our family business. But she is very shy, so she doesn't really like to be in front of the camera and uh, she delegates to me these events, like presenting it to you. But everything that, um, that ends up in a bottle of uh, port with our label is um, produced, is uh, tasted, is blended by Claudia. Um, and um, one day I hope that you get the chance to meet. If you come to the winery, she'll be very happy to say hello because she, she feels you know, very comfortable on a, a personal level, um, and um, yeah, inspiration. Claudia uh, gets her inspiration, I guess, from the walks that she she does in our little uh, village, or maybe for for the the nice um, teas that he ha she has in the morning, or maybe just because the landscape here is um, is unique. But we will need inspiration to achieve to our perfect blend. I will reveal the number five at the end of the tasting, but we will want you to, you know, to try to 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 get what what's your what the perfect blend is for you. And Fred was suggesting that if or the first one that gets to the, our blend, which I have written right here. The first one that gets there um, will receive a bottle of the 20-year-old at home um, directly sent from our winery. Do you have any questions? Well, I will now briefly introduce our family. So Claudia and me, uh, we are the fifth generation of uh, grape growers and uh, port uh, producers. We also make uh, still wine in, in the Douro. Um, but port is our, our passion and is our, our focus. We grow uh, about a little bit above 100 hectares of, uh, of vines. Um, not far, all pretty much around our winery. We are in the, what would be the heart, the geographic heart of the Douro Valley, in São João da Pesqueira. 
And um, the winery is located on the top of a hill, overviewing the, um, the valley. Some of the vineyards are located by, down by the, by the water, by the Douro River. Others are spread around the, the, the winery level. This is very important in terms of the flavors and aromas that we get from the grapes and the port in the end. Fresher areas, like where the winery is located, are going to give us uh, fresher ports with a, uh, a lighter body and um, more on, um, on, a, on a fresher fruit notes. Uh, vineyards that are located at lower altitude get more tannins, the vines are going to produce less grapes and because of that they, they will have more concentration and more on darker uh, berry notes, sp spicy notes as well. So it, location is very, very important. Um, so uh, we, we kind of, I joined the, the, the family business in 2009 when my grandfather, uh, João, passed away. Claudia has been in the business in, in, as the winemaker since 1999, uh, kind of replacing my father. Uh, my father retired uh, three years ago. And um, we are as the fifth generation, so things were not very easy at the beginning. They are not necessarily easy now, but there were many up and, up and downs. And um, well, we are happy now to, to achieve a solid um, business that is exporting 94% of the production to over 30 countries. And um, I mean, we are always very happy to receive people at the winery. Of course, this last year was not very easy, as we all know why. But we hope that some of you, hopefully many of you, are, are, are coming to visit us in the next years. Um, I know that there's a, a part of that group that is uh, watching us now is um, from the Port Forum. Uh, loves to visit the Douro and they put, in, they put us in, our, in their agenda uh, when they come over. So um, I, we look forward to see those faces, of course. Well, um, maybe it's time to, to start tasting our first port. My suggestion is that we uh, go uh, port by port. We start with the bottle number one, the component number one. I don't know if you can read it. Uh, uh, the light maybe does not help, but yeah, like here you can see it. Blend your own 20 year old tonic component one. We go bottle by bottle and uh, we describe a little bit uh, what we have in there and then we will try to blend them. So let's open the bottle. Pour in the glass. Of course that you should not pour it all because you will need for the blend part of what is in the bottle to be put in the in the liquids measure. So use just a part of it. Uh, and one thing that um, it's, it's important to me, not necessarily to you, is a spittoon. And I forgot to, 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 to get a spittoon, uh, so I, I, will, I will get it now. Um, apologies for the pause that we are going to do. So we have the spittoon. Let's go. So in my glass is component number one. Color of the component number one. Try to use a white background to check the color of the of the port in the glass. A white background is, is give you a, a much clear. Um, view of, of, um, of the color of the port. So I would say that um, this component number one is, is in transition, the color is in transition from um, like cherry to the beginning of the, brown, of the browns. We would say that this is not um, 
a, a very old port, um, as it still has some of the um, of the of the red um, color of the younger ports. In the nose, I I, I feel a bit of the. Um, the raisins and uh, dry fig notes, more on the on the dry fruit. It is um, a port with um, that still has body and um, a lot of tannins. So um, this is an interesting port to give us some some structure and um, and depth to our port. We will have to you. I, I mean, we are using some part of it, but um, we should not use a lot of it. Otherwise, we will get that our our plant is going to get too uh, young and um, too fruity, which we don't want. As you know, the Tony ports are barrel matured ports, cask matured ports that um, get develop a tawny color, a brown, light brown, medium brown color due to the micro oxygenation that happens in the cask. The wood has porous and it allows the air to go through the wood and slowly changes the color from a dark red which is the color that Yang Port has towards a lighter, um, a, a medium brown, and later lighter, lighter and lighter brown, and after many decades, it even gets some uh, green hints. In terms of nose, um, we will lose the primary notes of uh, fruit, being that more or less ripened, to develop um, um, a nutty character that is typical of the oxidation also in the um, in the cask. And on the palate, the tannins are going to be softened by the, um, the, the aging in, in the cask. So cask is, is critical to develop, to, to mature a, a tony port. There would be no tony port without a long period of aging in, in, in seasoned uh, oak casks, which we have them underground. I'm located at uh, our winery, and behind me is a kind of... Um, a cabinet with um, many old tools or tools that um, sorry that my grandparents and great grandparents my ancestors would use in their uh, labs when blending and producing port very good <laughs> are you ready for the bottle number two let me see if you have any questions if Fred, text me any question for me to answer? No, not yet. Good. So let's put the blend number one on the side, and we will get blend number two. Well, I think it's interesting to tell you what the blend, the sorry, the component number one is. The component number one is a single harvest Tony Port from 1997. Those that are uh, port lovers know that 97 was um, a very good year and an exceptional year for port with, that produced beautiful vintage ports with a lot of concentration, a lot of fruit. Um, also in some cases, um, a little bit on the, on the, towards the spicy side, but a lot of body, definitely. And um, when my sister is using this in, the, in our blend of 20 years old, she's definitely looking for some structure and, uh, and bring depth and concentration to the port, to the 20 years old. So now we go to pom, 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 component number two. I'm using another glass because we can always go back to the previous ports back and forth and it's interesting to compare colors so if you have that's why I was suggesting at least five glasses ideally six so you can go back and forth and compare colors so we can see that the color of this port is a little bit um, lighter um, it has 
like kind of a brick color, a light brick color. In terms of nose, it, 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 it is comfortably on the um, on this third year in notes of nuts, almonds, probably almonds, walnuts. We start getting a bit of the caramel notes as well. It is much lighter in terms of body, but it has a nice linger. So um, the, the, um, the volatile acidity is also a little bit higher. The volatile acidity is, a, is an, an element that is very, very important on, in, when you are blending, um, when you're making tony ports. The volatile acidity is going to give us tension, in the, um, tension to the, um, to the blend. To give you an idea, um, the volatile acidity is similar to what you may find in vinegar. So, in very, very small notes, or better said, it, it, the volatile acidity is going to develop naturally uh, with the years and would be very um, a typical if the volatile acidity of a 20 year old port would not be present, if it looked uh, too fresh basically. So this port, I, I guess that it's going to give us balance and elegance to our blend. And this one, it is a blend, it's a previous blend of a 20-year-old uh, Tony port. So my sister is bringing here this to the blend, I guess, to give it continuity and, um, and elegance and some more subtle notes of, um, of uh, caramel and nuts. Good. Are we ready for the component number three? Component number three. Let's get another glass. So, this port is a little bit cloudy. I don't know if it happens the same in your bottles, but in mine, which was made at the time of yours, it's, um, it's not perfectly shiny. And for a supermarket port or a supermarket wine, we'll always have a pristine color because it's filtered multiple times to make sure that the color is perfect. When you are producing uh, high quality ports, we try to protect the port from um, extreme filtrations. So the fact that this might be a little bit cloudy should not be a, any, shouldn't be a reason for you to be concerned. Um, in, in, with most of our best ports, we avoid filtering them to preserve the, the characteristics of the port as they are. So don't be, don't be nervous if your port is not perfectly shiny. Number two uh, crystal is a 20 year old blend. So it has already an average about 20 years. So with the component number three, I find a bit of um, um, dry plums, some figs again. I can see the beginning of the, the oxidation effect, but there is still some fruit left from um, from the um, the ferment I mean the fermentation from the, the harvest. The color is um, it's well placed on how a 20 year old uh, should look like. It's a, a medium light brown, so it's, um, the color is totally fine for a 20 year old.
the nose reminds me a bit of um, also of um, yeah, like fresh burnt um, sugar, like what we would do in a in a creme brulee. Interesting, very interesting on the palate, and different from the previous two again. It, it tastes a little bit sweeter to me. I get these, um, again, these notes of the, of the dry fruits, the figs, the plums, maybe even raisins. Um, as a, a longer finish than the previous one, but I, I feel it a bit wider, more complex. So it's also plays it, it has its own space in our in our blend for sure. This one is a single harvest as well, and it is coming from the harvest from the vintage of two thousand and three. Julian, no, you didn't. You didn't get the bottle. Try again. So let's go for component number four. This is the last of the components. So again, use part of it, don't use too much. We will need it for our blending session. So the color of this one is again on the light brown color. Um, in the nose, you get a lot of the older notes of, of Tony Ports. You can clearly see that this one spent more time in barrel than in any of the previous. It has a clear, in, a clear nut, a nut, nut, nutty touch, which the others didn't. The others still got the fruit, you know, going on. What's important in the number four, in my opinion, is the acidity. It doesn't have that much um, structure, like number one and number three have. But it has an acidity right at the end that is going to, to bring tension to our blend, I, I suspect. It's, um, it's a port that, in my opinion, it, clearly shows more age than um, the previous tree and um, it, it's going, it should not of course be a predominant in our blend but it has its own space to add complexity. Um, so I, I will give you now some time to do your own testing um, and I will try to answer a few questions that I can see on the, on the chat. So, the big fortified tasting, I suspect this is Mr. Alex Bridgman. Number three, yes. Yeah, I agree with you, Alex. Um, if I'm not wrong, 2003 was aging for a long part of its uh, life in um, 550 liter casks, while 97 has been almost or exclusively in a tunnel, in a three or four thousand liters tunnel. That's why we have, um, 
younger notes on, a, on the older port, which is the 1997. Any other questions? Let me see. Yeah. Uh, Fred is suggesting me to talk a little bit about the, um, the different sizes of barrels and um, tunais, balseiros. The, the vessel, the, um, the, um, the bean, the vet in which port ages, the size of it is very, very important. Tony Port always spends a lot of time in, um, in oak compared to Ruby Port that spends most of its time in a stainless steel tank. Stainless steel has no oxidation. Oak wood allows the air to go through the pores and it ages the port much faster than stainless steel. The bigger the, um, the, the vet, the less influence of the oxygen that you have in the port. If it's smaller, you get more influence of oxygen and the port is going to age faster. So if we want to speed up the aging of a port, we are going to put it in a smaller, um, in a smaller container, in a, in a cask, which typically has between 500 to 650 liters. If we want to slow down, then we will keep it in a, in a bigger, in a bigger um, vet. My sister loves to play them, you know, back and forth. Spend a few years in, a, in the big ones and then move back to 550 liter cars and then put it again in a three, four, five or 6,000 liters tunnel or balseiro as we call it in Portuguese. So if the barrel is um, standing like on the vertical, we call it balseiro. If it's laying down like a barrel, we call it tunnel. Two Portuguese words. Um, yeah, exactly. So the number four I didn't reveal. Fred is revealing now. It's um, it's my sister placed it in between the seventy and seventy-five. Good. Are we ready for the same guest? So we have, we got a first guest from um, Julian. I think he was the very first in which he says 40% of the number one, 20% of the number two, and 40% of the number three. This is his guess. Well, we should try actually the, the final blend so that my sister did, so we, should, uh, so we, can, um, we can see what, what we are aiming for. If we want to, to try to guess Claudia's blend, you can do your, your best blend from these four ports, if you prefer to play that game. So again, a glass. So the color is, um, is in that, I guess, I mean, a medium, a medium brick color. It still has some, some uh, red uh, color right in the middle, but you can see that on the sides, on the, um, do you say, like on the, on the outside circle of the, um, of the glass, we have a more um, light brown color. So what do we get here? We get the, some of the, of the dry fruits, but also the nuttiness that we were seeing on the component number two and the component number four. Well, in my opinion, the, the, the fresher notes are coming from the number one and number three. Well, we, we, we have um, a nice explosion of um, 
of fruit at the beginning, of dry fruits at the beginning, when you put it in your mouth, and then it slowly and on an elegant way, it goes more towards a end up end with a nutty character. It it does not really have a lot of structure because you don't want that in twenty year old Tony. We want more elegance and subtle subtle notes and a long lingering, which I think Claudia achieved when when she made this blend. You may notice that um, none of these ports are very sweet. Maybe the um, number three could be the sweeter of all. I don't have the real numbers, but um, but n n none of these are, are really sweet ports. Our house style are more on the drier side than on the sweeter side of ports. Uh, typically, um, um, Port wine will have about 100, 100 to 110 grams of residual sugar. Residual sugar is is the um, is the, the fructose, the, the the sweet notes from the grapes that were not fully fermented in alcohol during fermentation. So it's not added sugar to to the port. Not at all. Port is just made with a partially fermented uh, grapes and um, a wine spirit that represents about 18% of the total um, volume of it. It has, to make it on a drier side, we have to ferment a little bit longer the sugars, the fructose that we have in, um, in our grapes. So we end up with a port that is not as jammy as, um, as other producers prefer. It's it's really the style of each one of us that decides. And once I asked my grandfather why was my family making ports on a on a drier side rather than on, on the sweeter side, and he told me something that I will never forget. He told me, you know, sugar or the fructose that you have uh, in the port is like a makeup. It's going to hide uh, bad things, but also good things. And if you believe in your fruit, if you believe in your port, don't be afraid of reduce a little bit the sweetness level, so you get a more um, of um, of the contribution of the fruit, of the contribution of the grapes to your experience, to your taste. And we have always respected that. Personally, my sister and me are not don't don't we don't have um, a sweet um, tooth. So we prefer to be on the 80 to 90 grams of residual sugar instead of above 100 grams. Um, hmm. So Frederick knows the blend, of course. I can see that some of you are dropping your guesses. Um, one thing that... This is, of course, like... Um, level number two, I mean, this could be a, a reason for another tasting or another experience, but acidity is critical in wine, in all wine. And in the Tony Ports, the acidity is what's going to to keep the, I, I, I identified as keeping the, the flavors in its place and avoiding having a flat palate. It's, it's the tension, it's the character. It's the, um, the energy that um, you get in, in the port. Um, yeah, it's probably the best description that I could give right now. But think about acidity as, um, as what you get from uh, the lemon, lemons or a green apple. Um, they, they keep your mouth tight and clean, almost. Well, we are having very good guesses, actually. Excellent. Let's see if we get someone... Well, some of you are very close. Uh... Yeah, good guess, dear. Good guess. Less of, the, less of the 70s is a good guess. Of the company number four. Okay, so yeah, yeah, as Fred was saying, do you want me to reveal, or do you need a bit more time for 
some of you that are still back and forth. Fred, do you know if any of um, of our friends on the other side got it right? 2020. Ah, you're almost there. Yeah, some of you are almost there. <laughs> interesting. Super interesting. This is super cool also for us. Because you can you can see the way you're thinking. <laughs> it's getting technical, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So three more seconds while I have a sip of of tea. So, Tony, this is um, zero or five, basically. There's no decimal places, but it's, um, it ends up with um, like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Oh, there's, yeah, some guesses are really close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, thank you for Mrs. Bedford is very close. As um, as rosy is <laughs> ah, this is so cool. Uh, ten twenty-five. Um, not quite, Alex. Mm -hmm. Carol. But not really close. Fred, do you know who's the who's the closest one? <laughs> Louisa, it is um, multiples of five, so like five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Oh, Zach. <laughs> Okay, so of the first one, of the 1997, we are using 25%. So number one, bing bing, 25. I think the level is right there. Yeah, 25. So, now, of the number two, which is the 20 year old, we are, my sister is, is using another 25%. So let's bring it to 50%. Fifty. Uh, can you see? You probably can. Now, number three. So Claudia decided to ask the number three, the two thousand and three, to lead the 
the blend. And um, she uses 35% of it. Number three, we are going to bring it to 85. Eighty-five of number three, and of course number four. Fifteen um, percent. Um, are you having any issues with the connection? I can see Julian is kind of suggesting that. I will, I will keep going. So number four, fifteen percent. So now we get to one hundred. I brought an extra one so we can blend it to this one. So you want to make sure that it's homogeneous. Thank you, good to know that you can hear me correctly. So we are kind of back and forth, uh, make sure that it's homogeneous. And now, <clears throat> I will pour it in the glass. So this is the blend that we have just made. I'll put it here. This is then what would be the bottle number five or Quevedo's final blend. And let's see if color looks similar. I think so. I think it does. Let's see if it, are there any differences between these two. So the blend was initially made in about uh, maybe four months ago, um, and then shipped it to the UK. There could be small uh, differences between blending now and have it already blended. Typically, we like to blend and wait give it time to rest so the components can can integrate better Could, couldn't see any difference between these two. Um, um, so I guess that the blend was properly made by, by our team. And I hope you are having fun with this. This has been really interesting for me. I, I was a bit um, concerned at the beginning how could we easily know, explain how these procedures in front of the camera and doing it live. But in the end, I think that with your enthusiasm and um, your comments made it much, um, much nicer and interesting. Um, so question, do you, would you prefer a different blend than this that Claudia did? I, I could see that some of you were Maybe you didn't have that much quantity that can, you can get wrong many times, but some of you were going a little bit in different percentages. It, was that because you were trying to follow 
what Claudio was doing, or you were you were picking your best option for the blend. Fred is repeating the blend. Well, uh, Fred, Fred is asking, is, is suggesting to cover one, one interesting subject. How do we keep consistent over time? I mean, you buy a bottle of our 20-year-old today and you expect that it to be similar to a bottle that you are going to buy next year or with a bottle that you bought a year ago. Um, we need some anchors. We need some anchors to make sure that the blend has, has a, um, an identity, has a pattern that, that, is, is, that follows. Of course, that the ports age uh, in different directions down in the cellar um, during the years. But if we are able to use similar percentages of, uh, of the same port or similar ports in different percentages, we, we end up with a, with a, a similar style. And um, it, it is very important to keep two or three things um, aligned. One is the sweetness uh, level, which I told you we are a little bit on the drier side. Another one is the color. There should be no huge variations in terms of the color. I mean, would be hard to justify that this just suddenly, after one bottling gets too too dark or or too light, too um, uh, too amber. And of course, in terms of the palette, there should be a balance in, in all this. Uh, the 20-year-old the blend, it's, um, it's one of the most interesting ports, in my opinion, uh, of those that are really blended by the winemaker. Because it's, um, 20 is not that old yet. Um, you can definitely get the, the fresh notes like we have in the, in the component number one and component number three. But some of the ports are already going to show you more of a nutty character. And it, it, it's in transition from a it's in transition from a young to an old port, so it has to be well aligned also in terms of the palate to get it to be round, elegant, and with a long finish. Um, so this is definitely a, a, a challenge for the winemaker to 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 produce. Um, but it's at the same time it's super fun because um, I mean I I love the, the I think that really the twenty years old port it's a it's a great uh, port to sip um, at home after after dinner when kids are put to sleep and I have three and the oldest one is only six years old so you can imagine how my um, end of the days are really hectic some, sometimes but after that having a, a sip or two of, um, of um, matured and uh, elegant port is, um, is great and, and the 20s the 20 years old plays, a, plays totally on that level of elegance and balance um, let me see if we have more questions here. Question from Ben. Does any of those components are included in other of Quevedo's Tony? I would say that the um, number four could be used also in the 40-year-old Tony. I'm not positive about this, but I think it's um, if it's not exactly the number four, it would be something very similar from a, a bear or not a cask that has a, a similar uh, age. I don't think we use, we only make 10, 20 and 40. We don't really use any, um, any of the 2003 or 97 in the, the 10 year old blend. On the other hand, we had in the past a collator from 1997. In the future, we are also going to make a 2003. Uh, how does a chosen blend typically last? We try to blend, I guess, I mean, uh, this specific blend, I guess, it, um, we try to blend it for a full year. Um, so then we, we may have um, another variation in, a, in, the, in the next year, but we try to make it for 12 months. Another question, how long does it take to make a blend? How many trial errors? 
It, dep it really depends on your inspiration. I, I wrote, I, I had my notes here when I was, um, you know, preparing what I wanted to say at the, at the beginning of the tasting, and maybe some of you remember that inspiration was on that list. You, you need to be inspired to, to, to fine-tune the blend. In some cases, like one shot and you get it done, and you feel super comfortable, you try it again the next day and you, you, are, you are happy with that. Sometimes we go, it goes for a week, four weeks, tasting like every day or twice a week and say, ah, this is not yet there. And then you need some time to, you know, to get in kind of inspiration to understand what, what you can do different. It, it's good. I mean, we are, we are, we are not a, a very big um, a port uh, maker. So um, out we have, and only, let me say like, um, this in um, in kind of um, quote this only one about one thousand uh, casks or uh, containers oak containers so it's a lot of work to know what what is inside but as this is our life job in the end my sister she knows what what's inside and the direction that, that each barrel and each port is is taking she goes probably she she goes down to the cellar to taste everything maybe once or twice a year sometimes more if she's doing a blend like this a 20 year old but um but in many cases we, she doesn't get it right at the first she goes back and forth and try to fine tune because we we don't want to we don't want to be uh, we don't want to spoil port in a blend that just doesn't taste amazing Uh, I make the average age in the yeah could be could be Laura. Um, it does not have to ha be precisely twenty years old. It's important that the characteristics of the final blend, color, um, aromas, and and flavors are aligned with what a twenty year old port should taste like. Um, I mean, we we like we are happy to over deliver a little bit to make sure that we get something. Uh, that is consensual, but it does not have to be precisely 20. It could even be 18 as long as the final blend tastes like uh, a 20. Woohoo! We are getting close to the end, I guess. Have a good evening, Crystal. Good evening. Thank you for joining. Well, we will be back, I think is on the 17th of June, so in about a month with another session uh, that on uh, also about Tony Ports. That one is going to cover uh, colletas, so single harvest Tony Ports. We are going to have, uh, I think, five or six different colletas. Again, in these uh, 99 centiliter, uh, centiliters bottles. So um, if you want to join, you are going to be very, very welcome. I hope you had a nice uh, tasting. It was really fun to me and to understand that you guys were very, very close. Some of you were really nailed it or almost nailed it. So congratulations. We are going to pick um, one winner to ship a bottle of the 20 year old Tony. Um, and maybe we will need to, yeah, we, we will contact uh, Vintage Wine and Port to ask for your address. I hope you don't mind. Have fun, have the rest of um, a good day, and um, I look forward to see you uh, soon. Bye-bye.